everyone and welcome to the channel for another dwarf 2 video now tonight what we're going to be imaging is a pleiades cluster also known as the seven sisters cluster uh located in the northern hemisphere uh somewhat near the constellation of orion also near the california nebula now uh again we are using the dwarf 2 telescope first things first what you're going to want to do if you are going to use that telescope is you want to make sure it's polar aligned if it's not polar aligned you know you might get a lot of field rotation that can end up impacting your image. So I always recommend to polar align it. Uh, another thing, make sure you have your binning turned off uh, in order to get as much detail as possible. Make sure you've already taken your astro dark images uh, in order to reduce the noise. And first things first, as always, what we're going to do is do our calibration. So press the calibration and allow that to work. Obviously, uh, it takes three different images. Uh, make sure you have your dwarf two pointing at a part of the sky where there's no buildings, uh, trees, or clouds that could get in the way. And allow it to calibrate. And once calibration is complete, we will begin the focusing. Alright, as you can see, calibration is now complete. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our filter and we're going to put it on. Of course, this is if you're going to use a filter. For this target, I recommend you do not use any kind of dual band uh, imaging filter because that could reduce a lot of the... Uh, the nebulosity or basically the gas that you're going to see within the center of this cluster. Uh, what I'm going to use using tonight is the Dwarf 2 UHC filter, which should work perfectly for this. Uh, obviously, you want to make sure that your stars are nice and focused. Uh, the first, what we can do is we can go straight to that cluster. So let's find that here. Should be right here in the, category, uh, in the catalog of objects that we have. Let's go ahead and find that. There we go. We have the Seven Sisters Cluster M45. I was actually looking for Pleiades, uh, but it is Seven Sisters. So let's go ahead and do the go to. It is going to plate solve. And once it's plate solved, the object should be direct center in our image here. All right, plate solving is now complete. And as you can see, we have the cluster directly in the center of our image. Now, before we actually start the shooting, we're going to do our focusing. Uh, go ahead and press the plus and minus button until you see that your stars are perfectly sharp and uh, in focus. And once you're done, uh, we'll move on to the next step. All right, my focusing is now complete. Uh, next things next, we're going to go to more, make sure binning is off, uh, count 999, go to our settings. We're going to turn the exposure up to 15 seconds. Uh, turn the gain up to 100. That should be okay. Leave the IR on pass. And leave all the other settings the same. And afterwards, we're going to press the shoot button and allow it to start taking the images. All right, here we are now on PC. As you can see, I already have my M45 folder transferred from my Dwarf 2 uh, over to my laptop. So what we're gonna do first, obviously, is open up the serial program. We're gonna go to our preferences. Now remember that the uh, Dwarf 2 uses the Bayer pattern of GBRG, so you wanna make sure you uncheck this box, uh, set it as GBRG, or you can just leave it checked um, and it will automatically convert the Bayer mosaic pattern depending on the file's header. Um, another thing for this video, you want to make sure you have the OSD preprocessing without dark bias or flats installed uh, on your serial program. If you don't know how to, I do have a video of that on the channel in regards to uh, setting up serial. Uh, it's where you will find this. <clears throat> but uh, once you set your uh, M45 folder as your home directory, you go ahead and open up script and allow the OSC preprocessing without DBF uh, script to run. Uh, and it should go through pretty fast. Uh, obviously, we're using 999 files, so let's allow this to run. We'll come back to once it's finished. All right, so the stacking process is actually now done. Uh, I actually had to end up coming back to this process the, a couple of nights later because this actually took about 12 hours to actually finish stacking. Uh, and it used up about 108 gigabytes worth of data on my computer uh, for the whole processing. Of course, that's only on the serial program. 
So uh, in regards to that, one thing I would like to point out is anybody who does plan on doing post-processing uh, with Cyril with the one by one bidding on Dwarf 2, make sure you have a whole lot of storage space on your computer and make sure you have a good and fast enough computer uh, that will actually be able to process things a little bit more quickly if you're hoping to get things done a little bit faster. But anyways, now we have that done, I'm excited to see what we were able to get with M45 on Dwarf 2. Uh, so let's check that out now. I'll open up the result.fit file. Let's move this into auto stretch and unlink our image. And we can already see a lot of the wispy nebulosity right here. Uh, absolutely beautiful image so far. Of course, uh, one thing I did notice as well was these abnormalities uh, definitely caused by perhaps some scratches that I had on the filter, unfortunately. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit hard to keep those things maintained, so I will have to go ahead and buy some other ones. But uh, just for everyone to know, that's that's what these are. These are just some abnormalities on the uh, service of the filter itself. Uh, if you get a Dwarf 2 and don't use a filter, you will never notice this type of thing, uh, unless there's some issue that I'm not aware of. Uh, but this one definitely is not a result of the actual Dwarf 2 telescope, it's just a result of the filter uh, not having been not being taken care of properly as it should have been. So uh, just you know, quick verification, that's what that is. Also, if you're interested in buying the Dwarf 2, by the way, currently, uh, because of Black Friday, they have a huge sale going on on their website. So make sure you go and check that out. Uh, the, I have a link down, uh, down in the description as well, so you can go check that out for yourself. Uh, okay, uh, so first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Image Processing, Background Extraction, uh, generate that, and make sure I do not get any of that wispy nebulosity in here. Uh, in the samples, and once that's done, hit Compute Background to even everything out. Once that's complete, as you can see, there's a big difference in the nebulosity here. It's a lot more contrast there. Uh, let's go ahead and go do our uh, Remove Green Noise, hit Apply on that. Hit Close, save that image. Go to Image Processing again, Color Calibration, do your photometric color calibration. Obviously, we're going to type in M45 for this image, hit Find, and get, make sure the coordinates are correct. As you can see, it's right there. Hit OK here. All right, photo cal coloration is done now. It has properly rotated and is now uh, what we would generally see in the night sky. So let's get started with the real processing and the bringing out the color and the detail of this nebula in here. As you can see, also, there's some of the light pollution from my house as well uh, down here in the bottom right corner, but that's okay. We'll try to edit that out. Let's save that. Go to image processing again, and let's get rid of the stars here so we can really work on that nebulosity. So go to star processing, star net star removal, pre-stretch linear image, and hit execute here. Now while that's doing that, go ahead and switch it to linear mode so you don't have any errors with the serial program. Of course, I'm sure that serial is going to have some updates now soon. Uh, we're going to get a whole lot of new features. So, you know, obviously in future uh, reference, these steps might change but as of the moment it is serial 1.2.0 and if you have serial 1.2.0 on a windows laptop everything should work accordingly so allow starnet to run uh, and that should only take about just a minute it's about to finish up here and once that's finished we're going to go ahead and hit the open button all right let's go to open click starless results fit hit ok open that and let's check out the auto stretch here so here's our auto stretch image. Obviously, we're going to want to get rid of some of this green tint. Uh, make sure we bring out this nebulosity here and get rid of this background. So let's start working on that. Obviously, you can see that I had a lot of scratches on my lens. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I guess I'm going to have to go ahead and order some new uh, filters there. Uh, but for now, let's go to lin linear mode. Go to image processing. Uh, let's see. Generalized hyperbolic stretch transformations. Then bump this up to about 100. Once you do that, you can go ahead and drag this along until you see uh, the lines on the histogram show up. Click on the symmetry point here right in the middle and start dragging it up. Obviously, you don't want to overexpose your image, but you also don't want to uh, have it underexposed. So one thing you can do is you can drag it up so where you see the nebulosity, select that part, reset the generalized hyperbolic stretch, and select the symmetry point and start dragging it up from there. There we go. Just like that, we have the nebulosity there. And now we can start bringing down uh, the black point. Start bringing that up. Obviously, you don't want a highly noisy image either. So go ahead and hit apply here. And then we go ahead and do it one more time. 
Uh, unfortunately, I can't really get rid of this. I might have to somewhat crop this out later. Uh, for now, this is this is okay. Go ahead and select that part. Select that there and start dragging up a tiny bit more. Obviously, we don't want it too exposed because we don't want don't want a whole lot of noise here. So kind of lower it down just a little bit. There we go. That's perfect for me. Hit apply. Hit close. And now another thing you can do is you can go to this histogram transformation, set this to one. You can kind of drag up the black points just a tiny bit. Obviously, as you can see, uh, as, the, as you can see on these lines here, I clipped the black point a bit too much, so it ended up clipping into my data. Uh, that's a common mistake some people make. Uh, obviously, they make their background a bit too dark, and as a result of them making the background too black, uh, as they would think that, you know, that's what space looks like. Something, sometimes you just have to keep in mind, sometimes you need a little bit of that background coloration in order to not get rid of, you know, the complete nebulosity. So when you're doing your background stretch, uh, the histogram transformation, make sure that you do not clip too much of the data, otherwise it could end up looking too dark. And that's not something that you want, generally, in astrophotography. Unless you have a very good setup, uh, and you have your darks and your lights, you know, everything calibrated correctly, which the Dwarf 2 does not have. It does not have, you know, the bias frames, the flat frames, it just has the lights and the darks. So, uh, with this type of thing, you need to be careful. You need to be really careful with not clipping too much of your data. Now the next step we're going to do is we're going to hit save here, image processing, we're going to do our color saturation, and bring this up. Obviously we don't want it to get too saturated, because if it's too saturated, what could happen uh, is you could end up having, you know, a lot of these weird colored pixels, which is something you definitely don't want in an astrophotography image, because uh, it can really take away from the beauty of it. So go ahead and recenter in the frame. Honestly, I'm happy with how it looks for now, so hit apply here. We're going to save that. Now let's bring the stars back in. Let's go to the uh, image processing, do our star processing and star recomposition. Background stretch parameters, hit starless result dot fit. And there should be your uh, starless result here. And then we go to our star mask and bring that in. Honestly, we're going to want to bump this up a lot because the Pleiades cluster is all about the stars. Go ahead and bump this up as much as you want. Uh, I would like to hide that green uh, that we have here, if we could, just with a little bit more stars here. Obviously not too much. Hit apply here, hit close, and we save this as a unique file. There we go, that is now saved. Now another thing that you can do potentially if you would like to is you can go to Google Photos. Uh, you can go to a website called starfixer.org. So go ahead and go there, starfixer.org. And you go to your images, right? You go to your PNG file. It's gonna be in my desktop, M45, and here's my image, hit open, hit submit, and allow this to finish. And you'll see a difference between the stars before and the stars after. What this uses uh, is actually um, artificial intelligence to basically sharpen up your stars to clean up your image obviously it doesn't add in any data that wasn't there before you know it's not going to make your images look fake it's actually just going to make it look a little bit cleaner doing some extra processing that you don't have to do manually so that's quite convenient so uh, we're going to look at the difference before and after as well so this generally takes about 10 minutes to complete so let's allow that to finish uh, and once that's finished what we can do is we can you know we're, we'll save that um, and we will take a look at the difference here as well. Okay, as you can see, the job number is now done. So they, it actually gives you three different versions of your astrophotography image. And you can see those three here. Here's number one, here's number two, and here's number three. Now you can choose between which of these is your personal preference. Uh, personally, I'm going to say I prefer version three. So what we do here is we save image. I'm going to just go ahead and save that in my M45 folder as well, so we can compare that easier. So go ahead and save that. Close out of there. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way. And take a look at our two images. Obviously, here's the first one with the Dwarf 2. Uh, obviously, you see a lot of this wispiness here. The stars are looking beautiful, and I'm very happy with how the image came out. Um, except for, of course, uh, as a result of the filters that I used. Uh, that was a slight mistake that I made, so make sure you always check your filter before you use it. Uh, with your Dwarf 2 telescope or any telescope that you have so you don't have any wasted data. Uh, then we go to our other image. Obviously there's a whole lot less noise in the image. The nebula is looking very, very wispy, very beautiful. The stars are looking very nice. And honestly, I'm going to have to say I prefer uh, my second image 
to this image because also uh, sorry to this image because also if you notice on here uh, these are somehow a slightly less noticeable uh, but it doesn't actually add anything to the image it doesn't take anything away it just kind of cleans it up uh, but for you automatically so you don't have to try to do it manually uh, which can honestly be a somewhat difficult and frustrating process so uh, let me know what you think in the comments uh, honestly i think the dwarf 2 did an absolutely incredible job in regards to the pleiades cluster also known as m45 uh, again let me know what you think in the comments uh, please leave a like and subscribe it honestly does help support the channel um, i would also like to take the opportunity uh, to show you some work also shown by a uh, friend that i've been contacting on icloud mail now uh, also if you're interested in contacting me i have my gmail uh download uh sorry not my not my gmail but my icloud uh email in the description of the video let me show you uh just a little bit of work that i uh, a viewer has shown to me as well honestly i'm quite impressed uh by the work that they were able to show and i would like to feature it on the channel tonight so let me go ahead and show that to you all right vault plays this is the image that he actually showed me just tonight uh, an image that he took with his own telescope at home of the m45 uh let's see yes and messier one uh sorry messier 45 i'm sorry i wasn't able to pronounce that correctly he did an absolutely incredible job and i i think it's an incredible image uh, i want to thank you very much vault place for sharing this with with me honestly uh, I'm happy to know that the videos that I've been putting out was able to help you uh, to get this kind of image, you know, in regards to processing. Uh, again, I really want to thank viewers like you for viewing uh, viewing the channel and giving me your uh, input. And also, honestly, it's very encouraging being able to see the results everyone is able to give, um, especially, you know, as I said, viewers like you. So again, thank you very much for showing this. Uh, that's why I wanted to feature it on the channel. It looks great. This was taken with his uh, DSLR camera and i cannot recall which telescope he said uh that it was just give me one minute to bring that up okay no i just want to uh, change what i said he did not actually use a telescope this was only taken with his dslr camera with a 75 through 300 millimeter lens so this was no telescope honestly imagine what a viewer like him could do with a telescope honestly i'm really looking forward to seeing how you progress vault plays and again thank you so much for sharing with me uh this beautiful image and i wanted to share with everyone else on the channel as well so uh if anybody has any work that would they would also like to share as well that i could display uh, honestly i'd be very happy to this work is absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful and i'm very happy to share it with the rest of the world so uh thank you very much for watching everyone please leave a like and subscribe honestly it does really help support the channel um and uh, as always i really hope you all have clear skies and have a great night everyone